Chapter 14, Letter to Georgia. Dear Bill and Danny, Doug, I thought you'd like to know that the police were over at your house the other night. Carolyn Malloy, crazy, went after her hammer. This, but I can imagine what the hammer did to them. They are real. Going to pass fourth grade by the skin of the Casey Caroline chose me for a partner. We had to interview. Then we had to pretend we were today and write a report out in front of you. But your Georgia people that dumb. What I'd like to know what I'd like about now is to places with I'd gladly go down there life with the boys. See what you got us in by moving down to Georgia, Wally. Chapter 15, Trapped. Boy sisters were surprised to see Hatford heading for the garage again, going across the street just ahead of them. They had supposed that after the fiasco with Mr. and Mrs. Hatford might have bidden them to get up in the loft again. They knew they were right when pegging along the Brothers, back up to Hildering. We're not supposed to go up and locked again. We came back to get our binoculars. Peter, shut up. A certain swagger to that walk that a certain grin on their faces. Caroline herself frowned. Girls could only watch as the slopes across the clearing as they owned them. Marched right into the garage. It didn't take four boys to return. Okay, that's it. Plan B. As luck would have it, Mother was at a meeting of the faculty wives. There was a note on the table saying about six. Picked up a pan of they wanted dinner early. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. She told Beth and Caroline that for several days she had what they were to do the next time. Boys came over promptly, yeah. knowing that the Hatfords off the window facing the house. Caroline and Beth and came out the back door with shovel. Much whispering, they began to dig a hole in the around the corner of the house, just close enough that the boys quiet in the garage. They knew very well that the boys were well. had to put. On because the point was food off the window long enough for Eddie to get out the front door of the house around the bush the boys could enter the garage from the door. Then while the Hatfords on the floor above were watching the girls outside, wondering what Beth and Caroline were up to, Eddie, a can of brown spray paint, a brush she'd found in the Benson basement, secretly, silently, ladder. What the heck are they doing? Caroline wrote. There, there was the squeak of floorboards scooted around, in places to sneak out this morning. Frozen earth beneath hard and dig, but Jeff kept chopping away. Why don't we act as though we're burying something? Finally, what do you bet they'll come back here some night and try to dig it? Caroline tried not to. And it's in my pocket and you Caroline straightened up, holding the shovel out in front of her. Beth reached out and in jacket pocket. Then making a tight fish, she lowered her arm in the hole. Up again. Whispering. How long are we supposed to be out here? Caroline asked. Till Eddie gets back inside and comes to get us. Then we'll know she's done. Two girls got down on their hands and knees, and down into the hole. Then they began putting the earth back, taking it down and time about it. What do we do now? Was oh, dig another hole. We have to keep their attention until at that moment, the back door opened. Eddie called, "I'm making popcorn. Anybody want some?" "I do," came Peter's voice from the loft. 
Victor, shut up. Ash told. So you guys are still up there, Hedda yelled. Well, don't you think it's time you went home? We'll go when we're good and ready, Jake replied. Fine, what do we care, said Eddie. Side, shut the door behind them. Now, she said, it's only a matter of time until they discover their traps. Might as well go make her popcorn. Take it outside, sit in the garage, and watch the show. It, only, it took only a few microwave to pop a bag of girls poured it into a metal bowl back into the, out to the set cross legs on their desk facing the ladder and this is more fun than a movie. From time to time there came up in the lot. Sound of the boys' horse. Finally, one booted foot appeared through above. Another. Wally out. Caroline, stuffing another handful of Suddenly, the air was filled with yelps and cries. Wally had come down only for tongues and when Wally began yelling, Jake, they painted the ladder. I've got paint on my hands. Oh no, yelled Jake. Got it on the leg of my jeans. I can smell it, called Josh. Wally leapt to the floor. Jake wavered a moment, still holding on with one hand. Dropped the eight feet to the floor. The girls stopped eating. Somehow that was not the way they had imagined. They had thought the boys would discover that the ladder was painted before they started in the lot. Now there were two boys up and two boys down. We're trapped up here, you gosh. Sorrowful cry. You mean we have to spend the night here and can't have any food? Jake wheeled about and saw the girls. You're in big trouble. I've got paint on my... What do you mean, we're in trouble? You know you weren't back up here again. He only came to get the binoculars. You can't hold his prisoner, yelled Peter from the bed above. And he laughed. Joke. How many hat perks does it take to retrieve a pair of binoculars? Four. One to get the binoculars, two to get paint on their clothes, and one to do all do the yelling. Go outside and stand under the window, Jake. Josh called. Jake and Wally went outside, and the girls followed, still eating their popcorn. Josh was dangling feet from the high open window. There wasn't any glass at all. Catch! Josh yelled. One, three, and down Peter. The arms of Jake and Wally. Caroline stopped eating. She hadn't dreamed that the boys would actually come out the loft window. She could tell by the look on Eddie's face that Eddie had. What if somebody got hurt? Broken an ankle or something? Now Josh was preparing to jump. One of his, one of his feet got out of the loft window, and his whole leg. Second leg. Boy, I hope they leave before Mom gets here. He'll get it, Eddie. Come on, Josh, jump, she said loudly. Beth covered her eyes. Maybe we should drag out a mattress or something. Too late for that. One, two, three, jump, Jake instructed. Josh was dangling by his hand. Drop, and he let go. A second later, he fell in a heap on top of Wally and Jake. Eddie gave a sigh of relief. All four boys were finally on the off toward the sea, casting glowering looks. Lucky we got out of that one. I don't suppose their mom will call our mom. They'd have to admit they were back in the garage again. I guess it's all this very, very. They went back inside, cleaned up the kitchen, and diligently the dining room table. They heard Mother's car come up the drive from the park outside the window. Father's still at the college, she said. Some big reception for alumni. How are things here? Nothing special, said Beth. We're all doing homework. Mom went upstairs to change her clothes, and the girls cast each other relief. Caroline was finished. Last of her from Wally Hatford, finding only good things to say about him. Dapple would be impressed. Easy saying nice things about a person who had just won a major battle. Mother came downstairs and turned on the lights on the car. Then she put a seat of carols on the player and set about making it as the headlights of Father's car swept across the You're in ten minutes, girls, she called. In the kitchen tonight. Clean crackers, that's it. 
found her father's car idling in the garage, then the door slammed, and finally he came to the back door. Jean, he called. What am I smelling? Painting something? Mother came out of the paint. Paint? Of course not. Well, there's a strong paint smell somewhere. He said, Mother, walked over, stuck her head out the back, then closed the door behind him. Why, George, she said suddenly, you've got fresh paint on your good jacket. That's where the smell is coming from. There are stripes all across the back of your shirt. It's ruined. What in the world have you been? Chapter 16. Another letter. Torture. Dear Bill and Danny. Thought you might like to know. Painted your girl. We've been meeting up in your loft and they got smart and trapped us up. When we came down, I got paint on the jacket. Jake got some on Josh and Pete. It took us about an hour to get paint out with the turpentine. We didn't dare tell Mom what happened because we weren't supposed to get back up there. Boy, I'll say one thing for you. It was a dull moment with us. Jake is really off at them. But if you want the truth, I'll take Josh sort of after work. They decide to stay in Buckman after you guys come back. I'm sure could have a lot of fun. Can you imagine how turned you ever took them to cold tunnel? What about that field that gets bloody and Caroline, so she's probably in up to her. Right now, though, we've got snow. But you haven't seen any of that down in Georgia. We had a snowball fight for morning with the girls. Eddie went a little bonkers. You don't exactly want to mess with it. As usual, Buckman looks great at Christmas. Our wreath is up down everything. Three of my uncles are coming for Christmas. They come every year, remember? We have to give up our bed. But that's okay. Annie, are you going to give your Georgia Peach a present for Christmas? I'm not giving Apple Bomb anything. Merry Christmas. Molly and Jake. Chapter 17. Slave Labor. Coach Malloy stood in the living room, facing his wife and three Two sports. Well, he said, right cleaner says it can't. He can get some of the paint out, but not all. The way I can wear it to work. So I bought a new one, and here, girl, Phil, walked over. Hey, go. Since she had done the actual painting, and it had been her idea, it was she who was really punished. Your father's decision was this. All three girls had Frank, all three were responsible for cost to pay. Dad, I don't mind working for you. Pay for it. This is a lot. I could still be looking for jobs to do. Time to try out for that softball team. Yep. That, I'm afraid. Lock me up with bread and water, but please don't keep me. That's entirely up to you. You have to work doubly hard between now and tryouts, won't you? Caroline swallowed. That to they had moved. Her had dreamed of trying out for softball. Sure that she out hit and out every boy in town. This past fall, Beth and Caroline practiced still behind the college. Caroline imagined still hear the crack of bat against the ball as it see her sister tighten the hand. Now, Eddie passed the bill. Bill for the sport coat for Caroline and Jake. We could buy you a new car for this, Caroline is. Hard lace. Eddie, I want you to call the Hatford boy. Apologize. Ask if any of their clothes were or you can add those. Add Eddie. They weren't supposed to be up there in the first place. That's between their parents. We had no business garage and a garage we don't even know. Then he went upstairs. Caroline stared at his face. Calling the boys to apologize was wrong. I'll do it. We're all in this together. I'll ask to speak to Josh. If anyone will understand. 
They waited until their father came downstairs. They went up. Parents' bedroom dragged it into Beth's. Beth sat down on the floor, set the phone in her lap, and Beth dialed the Hatford's number. Eddie and Caroline sat on the floor across from her. Hello, said Beth. Is this Peter? Can I speak to Josh, please? There was a pause. No, Beth said, not going to. Give me to him. Put him on, will you? Caroline rested her head on her knee. Josh? Hi, this is. Listen, I just wanted to say that we're really sorry you guys. Holly and Jake, I mean. I guess the joke got a little out of hand. Eddie stared at her. Sorry, she. Well, Dad wanted me to call over. He got paint on his jacket. And that said, we, if we ruined any of your stuff, we'd have to pay for that, too. This time, Eddie put her face on her knee. Caroline was beginning to be. She hadn't thought that apologize quite that much. Why, the guys could say that all their clothes would make them a little slaves for the rest of their natural lives. Then she heard Beth say, really? Are you sure? Well, I had to find out. Thanks a lot, Josh. Appreciate it. What's all this sorry business? Why did you have to tell them about Dad's jacket? Everything's okay, said Beth. They got the paint out themselves with turpentine. Anything. Now, Caroline and Beth. Said Eddie. Nothing? Not a cent. I don't believe it, said Eddie. Sometimes it pays to be nice. Boo, said Caroline. Back again. Now all we have to do is figure out how to earn $75 to that check. I can bake, said Beth. I can take orders for every week and a bread muffin and bake them on Saturdays. Peanut butter cookies, too. Maybe I could offer to bake Christmas. Bake. Caroline tried to think of Thing she was best at, back thing, how did the dentist pay her? Had a greedy. Maybe I could perform for a birthday party. Read them stories and stuff. Eddie well, preferred the more. She wanted to keep her body believed. If in spring, she would offer to walk walls or parts. Nobody had that in mind. I'll do house cleaning. There must be busy people who are. Ready for the holidays and like some rubbing. Probably their greatest to me. Around two Saturdays, putting signs on telephone, shop windows, wherever they were allowed to post one. Services. You could see the Hatford boy watching them, hiding in a dreadful talk. Even Josh seemed. Eddie got a number of calls about house cleaning. It was encouraged. Company coming. All there was to do. They were glad to have pay to have their houses cleaned. Beth also got a few. She worked every afternoon when she got making chocolate rice stations, fudge bars. There were hard, hardly lavender scarf she'd be. A little sad on your arm basket. Caroline was the most. Does anyone want to hire a budding young actress to perform at birthday parties? She asked her family in desperation. Isn't anyone even having birthday Christmas? She got only one request to answer. All children. Afternoon. While the mother did her wrapping. The oldest had a cold. Caroline did not. Second child cried the whole time. Fell in the dark. Nobody wanted her to sing or let us see. Caroline was even more glad than they were. Beth had any bad feelings. Hatford boy she didn't talk much. Eddie, Eddie wished back in Ohio. Never said. Perhaps because Caroline had the fact that she and her sister she knew there were. Responsible, of course, but if the boys had stayed across the river where they belonged, nothing would have happened. Never mind that she. Buckman and 
Never mind that she loves things. Sometimes he did. The fact was that everybody else was. So, with the wrapping paper, two creaks, other had bought at the hardware store. Caroline wrapped this all from We find to get cat fur. Set it by the pile of presents. Inside was a little puddle of cat vomit. Patches of cat deposited on the back step. Big fat hairball in the You could even find a piece of Chapter 8. Take one. The week before Christmas, always the busiest time in the Hatford house. Mr. Hatford was late getting home. Here, it seemed, they mailed their Christmas cards and packages. Well, his father might be out till 7 o'clock trying to. Don't do it, Tom, Molly's mother would say. Don't think enough of their Aunt Emma to buy her a present in time. Then I don't see. I don't see why you should I'll try to But then she would remember a present she buy for some So we cheer same. Hatford is laughing and decorating by themselves. Boys didn't talk much. One thing they hardly even thought at each Caroline. Girls were so busy trying to earn the days that followed, however. Hands on the phone. Advertising. Josh said, a little bit sorry for them. Christmas only a few days off, Wally perhaps, could have been thinking about forgiveness too. He couldn't quite forgive them yet. Little joke, he had up his that was too good to pass up. He had to admit he was a little bit mad. Still a lot mad. He had got pain on the sleeve of his jacket. He was also still mad at Caroline for could forgive her for wearing his crown. His socks and shoes. Your pants? Was there any boy in Buckman who would like to have his under by a girl bearing them? Most boys he forgot contaminated. Most boys, in fact, probably have Wally himself will certainly wear them again, especially under happy face. But he had a big plan for Days before Christmas, the box wrapped them in angel paper, red bra. The hardware store. It was the blue and gold paper that the hardware store half price. He put the box aside to take school on the last day. Put in Caroline's book. Was afraid she might guess who. Probably not open. So he didn't even put her name. Paper could admire her, so she'd be sure to open. She no more admired Caroline than when she saw the found another coat, another note. Like them so much, had them. She'd know Wally would. Day before vacation, no one was looking. He looked into the box off the piece. He, had. he wanted it something he would see it every day so he could get it. Now he didn't know what it was. There were small flat boxes. Not the square box he had. Mom, he yelled. Where's that box I read? Hey, I have to take it to school. There are boxes all over this house. Square one and angel wrapping paper. I left it on the mantel I Four boxes, boxes on the floor. all had in wrapping paper. I have no idea which one you're talking about. Park began. This was too good a joke to get lost somewhere. Well, it's not here, and I've got to find it here. What was it for? His mother asked. Right? All he felt he could not possibly tell. He knew she would demand to know Mom could see trouble about it. For my teacher, he pitched. Oh, how nice. I'll have to find it without my help, though. I've got a ton of things before I leave for work in the morning. Molly kicked all the way to school. 
couldn't believe that all that work wrapped up special. Now it was whoever got it wouldn't even understand the joke and found it later. He late to take Caroline's place. Hi, Wally, Caroline said when he poked him in the back with the Merry Christmas. And to Wally's surprise, he found a present sliding over and falling into his lap. Her way of apologizing ain't Frank Fan. No one seemed to care. Wally felt his ear. Partly I guess. Partly because the girl Caroline. Partly because almost what he had almost given. Uh thanks, he said. Left it into his desk before. Caroline thought he was going to the classroom and everyone. Crazy. He felt uncomfortable all morning with Caroline sitting on her best behavior. Is it possible after all? He liked him anyway. He bolted to far away from Caroline. That on the other side of the one. Never so glad when he crammed Caroline's present present to her. Set out for home. Others glad that the already far. Boys were almost a block from home. Like tap of a turned to see Mother Mrs. Hatford spent the afternoon afternoon on Christmas Eve. Be home in about an hour. Molly, I found that gift you wrapped and dropped it off. Told Mrs. Applebaum she couldn't find it this morning, but wanted her to have it. I'll drop. What? Said the box. Left it on the bookcase. I just gave it to you. You don't have to worry about it. Mother drove away. And Wally wondered if he could have a heart attack. Without a word to his brothers, he whirled around and ran as fast as he could back. His book bag banging again. He had just received a gift that. No, with his underpants. Since you like them so much, have them. Probably be thrown out of elementary. I had to stop this. The sides began to his forehead. Tore up the driveway to the down to the faculty end. Then he stopped. The car was just pulling out of the park. Dear Wally. Man, boy girls must be eating our garage. I wonder if there will be anything left of our house to go back to if we come back to it. Dad's been offered a job here in Atlanta for next year. He doesn't know yet if he's there are a lot of things. Christmas is really weird down here. Just the snow. Got a present for Danny Steve. One who's gorgeous. And she's thinking of giving her batches of Why don't you give Miss Applebaum a jar of dick pickles? Dill pickles. Merry Christmas. Make sure the Malloy she doesn't catch on fire and burn our house. Bill and Danny. Chapter 19. Mistake. Caroline Malloy did not care for Christmas. Each year, instead of Coach Malloy, did not care for Christmas. Each year, instead of a present, he gave his wife a catalog and asked her to choose whatever she liked. Left shopping for this year, in fact, mother had to gift for his secretary. Secretary. Also for the receptionist phone for the department. I'm about shopped out, mother. Aunt, family and two days until Christmas. Then turning to her husband, is there anyone else at the college we've forgotten who Don't think so. Finding it, dropping the rest of the of the floor. What did you buy the women in my office? I ordered a box of pears for the women. I thought your secretary deserved something. You said she was engaged to be married, right? Well, I found all carved wooden box that love letters. 
I think she might appreciate it. Sounds good to me. Caroline was glad she didn't stop. It was all she could do to buy gifts. Her biggest inspiration of all, however, was Polly Hadford. Cat vomit with the hairball and the pink had just to be. She was dying to know she had opened a restroom her at home, saving it. Everyone seemed to be relaxing. Eddie had only one more house to Christmas. Beth, however, had an order of a dozen cookies. The woman wanted them fresh. Beth had to get up early the next day, take all day. Not how he had on Christmas Day, it had to be done. Mrs. Malloy had gone to the garbage after breakfast was called, called on her way back inside. Package for you, Caroline. I didn't think Mrs. Hatford, Hatford had been here already. He was just sitting on the back steps. Now, why would he put Caroline took one look at the box and Wally had given her a present. Something even grosser than cat vomit. Took it to her room, then had second thoughts and went out to the garages. Called the bomb squad. Probably something. It was wrapped in the In fact, it looked like the very present she Caroline's Holding one back and gave it. Took it loose from it. Out the box, draped with flowers. The word letters were carved on the wall. It could only mean love letters. Caroline gasped. The secretary's present for the woman who was about to be married. Somehow she had picked up the wrong given Holly Hatford a box for love letters. This was a terrible mix. In horror, she opened handwriting. Yuck. Then who? Caroline felt. Tore into the house and looked at the bad secretary. Then, afraid to ride her bike in the ice, stuffed the present from the hall into a shopping bag, set out across the town and the apartment surrounding campus. Took twenty minutes. Find the right apartment. Ring the bell, no one answered. It was still early. She couldn't just leave the box out there. The secretary wouldn't. Somebody might walk off with it. Finally, Caroline was about to leave. She heard the light off the other door. The door opened just a crack. The looking woman in the bathroom stared down at Caroline. Are you Dad's secretary? Caroline asked. Uh, she was. Turn the secretary asked, Are you one of the Malloy girls? Yes, said Caroline. I brought the present Dad was going to. Mom picked it out. I think there's been a horrible mistake. The secretary opened the door and tried to hear it. Yes, she said. I guess so. There in the trash basket, just inside the door, or angel wrapped the box in which Caroline had put the cat box. Sit down, rubbing her eyes with. Caroline sad and I'm really sorry. I was playing a trick on a boy at school. How he got not his. Dad doesn't know. The secretary reached for the shopping bag already on the Caroline had removed the rope. There was only a note on the wrapping paper. Precious memory. See, Caroline realized it for coach, but how could we? Lovely, but I'll put my fiance letters in there. Wondered what I had ever done to make your father awful thing. In fact, I was just about to call Caroline Crane. Tell me, the secretary went on, who could you like so much? Cat puke, hairballs, and mouse feeding. Molly Hatford. What did he ever do to deserve this? Caroline thought about it. She could remember a lot of things. Interesting, everything she thought of had been kind of fun. I don't know, she said at last. Just fun to teach. Did he give you something off? No, he didn't give me anything. 
Roman smiles a little. Well, I'm not sure I would have. But I do appreciate you coming up. And I promise not to mention it. Yet. Caroline walked thoughtfully back home, realizing how close she was. Molly had not returned the box. Not said it. And if the secretary had called Caroline's mother, already. She shivered in spite of her tears. Never tease Molly Hatford again, she stopped hating the Hatfords. Actually, never really. They disgusted her and back when Dad decided to go back to Ohio with Happy very much. Walked into the house with comforting Fergie. Beth was there. There sat Peter Hatford, chocolate chip lemon square in the other. Guess what, Caroline? said happily. I've got the job. Said Caroline pleasantly. Her new role. The Hatfords. Are they? I'm a cookie tastier for Beth. I have to take a cookie from every batch she makes. Got the sugar. Hey, how lucky can you get? said Anne, raising her brows at Caroline. Caroline with your other job. Tell her who hired you. I'm a spy for Josh and Wally, said I'm supposed to report everything you're doing here. Caroline stared at Peter. Why did you tell us? Because Beth said I could have all the cookies I could eat if you tell her why Jake sent me. It wouldn't make any difference. I could still tell them what they're doing. Great, said Caroline, changing with Beth and Eddie, trying not to laugh. And what will you tell them we're doing? Baking cookies. And what else will you tell them? Beth? Remember that little plant I taught you? Her little girls made up. Sugar, spice, and air, and all of that. You got it, said. Tell your brothers that, and watch them. Chapter 20. Worst Christmas ever. Well, you knew it was going to be an awful Christmas. Three uncles and one aunt arrived on as always, they had presents. That was the night. Mother roasted the big turkey for one of the ones all the work lost in the hardware store. That was nice too, especially the mince pies and chocolate. It's even nice when Tom had brothers stood around the old upright piano after Vivian played quartet, stomach full of mashed potatoes. Presents we anyone not Molly did not sing. Tired. She could not even go to bed because the living room or that night. Until the uncle stopped singing. Not even be God rest Mary. And the uncle sang, but as Wally's eyes began to the alarm seemed to the words seemed to change. Little Hatford boy for to say for what Christmas Day put his hands over his and out the sink that crawled into a past around him. He felt himself drifting off. Mrs. Ab Miss Applebaum was the big got the Pittsburgh Steel Hecky, computer game and the book. He knew that as soon as the vacation was over, we'll have to go back to school. Caroline he wasn't sure which would be he had expected that Caroline would have really read the box she gave. It turned out to be a box for letters. Love letters. Caroline Malloy was actually in Now he knew. Well, he had given the box back, of course. What if she loved letters to him? Supposed to keep them? What if other guys found them? Wasn't ready for wasn't ready for Caroline. Dad, he said later, after the company had father worked. 
Have you ever thought about living somewhere else? You have in mind, Wally. Want me to move down the block, and maybe? No, I mean all of us. I mean, Vincent's Georgia. Always moved. I just wondered if we might ever go. Can't see any reason to, Father replied. I have a perfectly good job with the post office. Mother works at the hardware store. Husband seems like a fine place to raise boys and have a lot of friends. No, we don't have any plans to move. It was when Wally thought of facing however, that he thought of running. Not only had he never given a girl, he was not a boy who gave teachers. It was not just the thought of what happened on Wally's under. Was what she was. What if he walked into Miss Avalon's class the day after Christmas? He had all her gifts: coffee mug, a paper plate, and pen. What if she thinks the person out loud and shows the gift to class? What if at the very end she said, "And then from Wally Hatford, I received a very strange class to see." Underpants with happy face. The happy face was drawn on the. Side. Molly didn't think. He tried calling his teacher. Apple bomb. Maybe she didn't live in Buckman. Couldn't bother them. The days that followed Christmas, Molly have to get by himself. Max said, or whatever. Pick in the rain. Sounds he is not being. To think and thing that came to actually, Caroline. On one of the days, Pops and Josh were other things. Wally, now yeah, where shoppers were busily turning presents, they want to close. Strolled through the five and dime and wandered through. Drugstore and was looking through packs, track and old up to see Caroline Malloy standing on the rack of the Daddy. Caroline spun the rack to the left and Wally spun the rack to the rack to the right. She didn't walk away to the Wally couldn't bear for her to come back. Why did she? Why did she have why did He's only realized, however, that eight months perhaps back or not, he didn't make both he and Caroline opened their mouths time. I shouldn't, said Wally. I didn't, Caroline. They each stopped. What, said Wally. I saw Caroline swallow. I didn't mean to give you that box. He was supposed to go to Dad's second. Giving his secretary a box for love. Asked Wally. Not his love letter. He's engaged to be married, and Mom picked him. I got the boxes mixed. Wally thought that over. That was a. What did you mean? Uh, well, that was a mistake too. Secretary. Was it? Don't want to know. Caroline laughing. Wally wondered. He found that he was starting to smile himself. Yes, I do, he said. Cat pew, Caroline. The big fat hairball in it. Undigested mouse feet. Wally's eyes opened wide. That went to your dad's secretary? Oh. Wally laughed out loud. Then he thought of Miss Applebaum, the present intended for Caroline, and he stopped. Applebaum got yours. I'm in big trouble, he said. Now Caroline looked good. Was it? She Underpants you wore to give your support to people. Happy face on the pants. Girl saying, since you have them. Suddenly, Molly and Caroline were laughing together. Think she's opened it yet? asked Caroline. Of course, after Christmas. What's gonna do? Molly shrugged. Catch the first greyhound out of town. Oh man, that first day back to school. Caroline moved around the paper back and forth. Side Wally, right into his eyes. And How did I go get the? Asked, what? 
vacation's over, I'll go up to her desk and Sure, they were meant for Okay, so thanks. Because he won't tell me what might believe happened. He didn't tell anyone at home about taking the day. Peter of course. Gosh, I wasn't sure. Take Nevertheless, he began to think that maybe it had been a pretty When Monday came, Wally walked to the classroom. Sat down at his desk and got out his map. He looked up. There was Miss Applebaum. Gray eyes staring right through him. He felt his backbone holding like an accord. He seemed to be sinking lower and lower. And then, before he could say a word, he heard Caroline rise from her chair. All the kids. All the other kids were Beckett's. Caroline faced the team. Said Miss Applebaum, I've got a present it was from Wally. I wondered if I could have it. I did it. Caroline actually did it. I to go I to go pass and pray for Attica Wally. Said out Miss Applebaum. What would that be, I wonder? Actually a pair of underpants. Yes, said Miss Applebaum. The happy face. Trying not to. And a note that said, Have them. Molly swallowed. I really meant this weird little present for you? asked Miss Applebaum. I guess so. It was just a joke, Caroline. I didn't really act, Wally. Miss Applebaum reached down and pressed. Very well, she said, taking out her box. Find us the ink and copy paper. And you get to Caroline. Since you seem to know the content so well, it's obviously I have it. Thank you, said Caroline. Walked back toward the positive box on it. Sounds sweet. For you, since you obviously like them so much. Then she laughed and Wally smiled. And it was wonder. It was the crazy. Caroline? No. Chapter twenty one. Paying the debt. Caroline did not tell her sister what he had done for Wally. She didn't even tell them that Wally had been planning to get Wally and Caroline. For the rest of the week, she did not want to put Wally in the back. Tweak his ear. The back of his neck. Afterwards, in the morning, to them. Until Sunday evening, Buckman awoke to her. The girls were awakened by their father, who poked his head into every bedroom. Eddie, he called. Then Beth, Caroline. When each girl rose up on the pillow and said, It snowed again. Sunday morning. Snow shovels in the crotch. Way to earn some money to pay off your debt. So I just suggest you get it. For groans and whispered protests. But the girls had no choice. Out of bed. Did their sweatpants and and after a hot oat breakfast, dragged her sleep out to the bed. Good looking at the I don't even know how much to charge. We never had to do this before. Five dollars a house, Caroline suggested. Even if we did every house on Island Avenue. All three girls were Let's go across the river and catch this way. Beth looked at them incredulously. Why? Just to make them feel good. Show them that we're up and working while they're still lazing around. That we can shovel just as fast as they can. Yeah, let's, said Beth. Shovels over their fault mine. Girls traipsed down the hill. Icicles hanging off. There was no sign of activity at the After its newspaper was still lying on a heap. Beth picked up the paper. Popped up. Beth knocked. Near a chair scraped. Five. Then puts. Finally. Followed by Jake. 
Why, my goodness, it's the boy girl. Eight o'clock in the morning. Won't you come in and have some cocoa? Nick backed up, as though afraid that they might. Well, I know you're wearing his pajama box. No, thank you, said Beth. I wondered if you wanted your sidewalk. Only five dollars. Aren't you early, Bert? Not for to Here I have four boys in a suit. We're trying to earn money, so our dad, Caroline, and her So we thought we'd start with you. Oh, well, in that case, ordinarily I'd have the boys. But girls go right ahead, and when you come inside for the five dollars and some cocoa, is it? Mom, Jake Whale, more clothes, and Eddie, Beth, and Caroline exchange friends. Bust their shovels and began to scream. They could hear pounding footsteps. They knew that Jake was with Josh and Wally. Together, the four probably would be right now. I bet they were. Us, doing the show. I don't know about that, said Maybe they can stand up. Maybe they love to see it. But Eddie agreed with me. They'll be embarrassed still. Imagine having the neighbors see the girls show up on the sidewalk. What do you bet they come out in order? Well, if you're right, they'll probably come out. They'll just have to prove they're stronger and harder and faster. They're really dumber than gold. They finished the steps and half the sidewalk. Suddenly, out came Jake and Josh, my wallet, all wearing boots and jackets and caps. Let them push them off, no matter what they do. Don't even look at them. Caroline was shoveling as fast as she could. Four pairs of boots appeared in front of her. She up to see the cap but looking at her and Beth and Eddie. Need some help? asked Josh. No, said it. Really, Josh. We're doing just fine, Eddie. I know, but how are you going to help all the other houses on the street? Mom said you're trying to earn some money. So what? said it. We can do the sidewalks up one side of the street and down the other, all by ourselves. Can't. But we thought maybe you'd like us to help, Josh. I mean, you could do one side of the street and the other. All together on the same driveway. Yeah? You guys walk off with all the. No, wait. Molly spoke up now. What if we said you could have all the money? Eddie, Beth, and Caroline. They had sprung new heads. You gotta be kidding, said Caroline. No, we're not. Wrapped up. Just said we're going to help you, so you can at us. Up you. Well, if you're going to help, then help. Don't just stand there gabbing. Perhaps. Still not trusting, he dumped a shovel full of snow. Could have buried him had he been. Chris Bonce dug up a shovel full of snow, dumped it so he was standing. Then the four boys began madly shoveling snow, jumping in as yeah, without actually touching him. The girls shoveled back. Less than two Hatford's I was. Hell, said Beth when she was at the end of the day. That didn't take long. Josh walked to the house and shovel your steps and walk, he said. He asked, only five dollars to have it done in five minutes. Driveway is five bucks extra. Five minutes? I wondered how it gets Okay, it's a deal. So it went. People who had never paid who had never paid before to have Driveway paid five or ten dollars just done in five minutes. It's got to be a game after all. Their side of the walk or drive faster. Boys are the who could dump their snow closest to not actually dumping it on any. It wasn't long before it turned. Only when Peter began to complain, Caroline realized that they hadn't collected yet. So some of them dragging their shovels, others with shovels over. They headed back up the block, their breath frosty and frosty. Hug through the snow. Hey, said Peter, now that they were back to get ready. I have a great idea. We could have a sort of business. Whenever it snows, we could go out together and make a lot of money. Yeah, and give it all to the girls, Jake. 
Why not? said Eddie. We're worth it. Ah, said Polly. Give the girls money, they buy you presents, boxes for the cat you, house you. Caroline. You should talk, said Caroline. You're going to give me a pair of underpants. Your underpants. You were trying to trap us in the garage, said Polly. Wouldn't have done it if you hadn't been spying on us off in the first place. You wouldn't have been meeting up there plotting something new just to bug us. Carl was close to the Atkins driveway, just as the Hatfords were dragging their kibbles along the sidewalk. They stopped and watched the car. The driver's door opened, one boot of the foot came out, settled itself on the driveway, then the other foot, and head finally opened. So was out of the car and looking around. Hi, Wally, Jake, John, Peter, too. My goodness, how are you? I believe I haven't worn boots since we moved to Georgia. <coughs> the boys were speaking. Only stand and stare. They are walking up the sidewalk to the other of their five best friends. Best friends the Hatfords had in the whole war wide world. Oh, man. Chapter 22. Company. When Mrs. Benson saw the girls, however, she said, Please be Coach Malloy's daughter, Aunt, she asked Wally. Yes, he said. Benson studied them over the rim. I see, she said. Went on up the steps. Hatford was talking. She knows. Knows what? Asked Wally only. Right, the Bensons. Josh accused. Jake, however, maybe they're coming back, he said. He ran up the steps after Molly and Josh followed, leaving the girl staring after him. Mother was hugging Mrs. Bensons in the hallway. Dad was saying, Well, surely this is a surprise. Actually, I'm sorry. Wilkins. I thought it might be a good idea to check them, especially after the letters the boy Molly. Molly swallowed again. Letters, said, Wal said Mother. What letters? Letters about how Caroline tried to kill Beth. Oh. You know, said Dad, I think we should sit down at the kitchen table and have a cup of coffee. When he saw Wally edging chairs, he said, you guys are included. Some orange juice. Grown-ups sat at one end of the Boys on at one side, while Mrs. I just didn't know what to make of it. Girls throwing papers around up in the bed. Granted, it's old, but it served us well. I think that it might survive the college. Coach is Let us know if he wanted to make property. Father looked at Wally. I guess I exaggerate a little. Yes, you do, said Wally. Suppose you start at the beginning. Wally was giving. Jake was giving Wally his greater look. Josh seemed to be nodding, urging him on, so Wally explained. We were holding club meetings up in the loft just before. I decided to wrap us up. Eddie got some pain in his ladder, and when started to come down, we got... What? said Mother. Don't worry, we got it out with Trevor. Then when Mr. Malloy... Now the girls have to earn... That's all. All they painted were the rungs of the ladder. Really taken pretty... Goodness, you do exaggerate. Wally hoped that one. Well, that might be the end. I thought now that he'd told me what really happened, Mr. Benson would. Well, then, I could see. Hurry about and go back to Georgia. Sip your coffee thoughtfully. That it's hard being away from your. I wanted to feel at home in Georgia, and. Wally seemed to like it a lot. But I missed that. Suppose if we come back, I'll miss. Has Hal made a decision? Mother asked. Not really. He had one offer from the college where he's now, and he's from some other school. Besides, I suppose it could go either way. Just be nice to know if you come back to Buck. There will be a house to too. Jake and Josh, Wally and Peter, themselves as soon as they thought they could get made a beeline. They got to Jake. 
for and said, Molly, you jerk, Josh said, still mad that he told me. But Jake asked, what are we going to do if the vents come back? What are we going to do? What do you mean? Come on, Jake. Girls have been fun and you Yeah, but we used to play ball with the guys every summer. Play ball with the girls, said Eddie especially. We used to explore the cove and play around in the old gold mine. We can explore them with the boys, said Mike. Girls are nice. They make good cookies. Back his head in exasperation. What's happened to you? You've been brainwashed. No, we've been waiting for the Vincents. Always wanted. To. Maybe we can have both. Maybe the Vincents will come back and the Malloys will stay. Not likely. Buckman isn't that. They don't need two football players. College. The boys sat morosely on, staring at each other. The thing is, said Coach Malloy might ask his family. What they all hate it here. They'll probably. Be Girls really want to stay. Think they'll want to stay after all we've done with them? Asked Wallace. Hey, they'll probably stay because of what they had as much fun as we did. Wally walked out in the hall to see whether Mrs. Go check on her. Still downstairs. In fact, she was on the phone. Boy. Well, I'm glad to know you're enjoying our house. I didn't want to just come bang and go. I didn't want to see it. I wondered if there was anything. Yes. Well, that's fine then. Of course, I'll come by. There's the boys crowded around the. Mrs. Benson hung up. He said. He said, "Well, I'm going over there and see for myself if there's a fair thing. Once you open, I idea what's happening to you." Great not said. Mike. But I feel quite sure the Malloys are responsible. I sure hope so, said Jake. The boys watched from the crack in the door. Vincent went out the door and the car around to the um, to the on Island Avenue. The next hour and a half, they need the bedroom. Using their father's binoculars, they found enough space to half expect Avenue. All the Malloys. I out of the back door. Then they finally saw Mrs. come out of the house, went to the garage for a minute, came back and got into the car. What do you suppose happened? I don't know, said Jake. We could call and find out, John. Jake shook. Then all eyes fell on Peter. They never did get their five dollars for shoveling your sidewalk. Sure, how about you take it? How about you taking it over to them along with a note? Sure, said Mike. Every time I go to their house, I get cooked. So Wally went downstairs and got the five dollars from along with a lecture. Goes on to the Malloy house is true. Them and the Benson. Tales. You can't write a letter without exaggerating, Wally. Don't write one at all. Wally went back upstairs with the book. Josh wrapped it in. Get written. So are you guys getting out or what? Give it to one of the girls, please. Not the parents. Okay, Jake instructed. Your stuff the note with the five dollars across the mud. Boots and parkas for summer when leaves are on hardly see the trap door. Now with the across the river, they filled with binoculars. They watched as Peter shuffled along. All along the road, ran his hand along the gate. Every so often, he stopped to throw a river, then leaned over to see where it landed. Landed He'd be crawling. When did he slower? One day, by the time he got there, when did he slower? The boys could come back to him. And the snow again. 
time. The boy's groan just stopped in the middle of the head thrown back and tried to collect. Finally, he took it aside and said, kept the Taking two steps up the their back lawn. Taking two steps, sliding one back. Disappeared in the sleep of the Hour went by. Hour and fifty. Hour and a half. What could he clean? What did he do? Take be moving in? So continued to fall. Now almost a half a window lit. Boys to shovel that sidewalk before called the mom. Mother called up the stairs. What? We already did it once. We paid the girls to do it. Jake broke it. Well, it's got to be done again. But just then they saw Peter back across the it Took him about as long as taking him. Finally, he opened the front door and began pounding his feet in the hallway. Jake and Josh run. caught him up so fast he did. Time to get his chocolate syrup around. Cookie crumbs on his jacket. Peter looked dazed and happy and kind of sleepy. What did they say? asked John. Are they leaving? asked Jake. Mrs. Vince told them they had to move. Molly wanted to answer. Wally pulled Peter pulled the note from his pocket and Wally. Wally read it silently. Out to his bed. So you were the one. Murder up in Beth's room. Painting the girl. Now you want to know whether we're leaving or not. Know whether we're going back to Ohio and what is the back from the So what? We're not going to tell you. Hard waiting back across the bridge with us. Just think what it will be like waiting until next summer. Your answer. Eddie, Beth, and Charlie. Yes. Thanks for your help in shoveling the sidewalk. Double P.S. You notice this snow again? Did you notice we took shovels? You know it will cost you five dollars to get them back? Per weirdo.